Hello, all you fine bronies and Pegasus sisters, and welcome to the NBS show. I am one of your hosts, the man, the myth, the hippogriff, brony reviewer, Silver Quill. And just now, 50% of you are seduced by my super smexy voice. With me today are guys who are also super smexy, but maybe not as good in the voice department. James Cork. Get me out of this chair. He kidnapped me and took the introduction from me. Help. And Norman Sanzo. For Equestria. <laughs> and yes, as is my talent, I often steal the show. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, so how are you doing, man? <sighs> I'm doing well. How's everybody? I know James is gagged up a bit, so yeah. No, 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 I, I freed myself. I have a laser, a laser watch. I freed yes, myself. Right. <laughs> Doing good, okay. having my coffee, and ready to talk about this, these two comics. Not sure if one. Glad to hear it, James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Yes, indeed. And as as the uh, opening may imply, we'll be talking about My Little Pony IDW Comics issues 30 and 31. It's called Ponyville Days, but let's call it like it is. Ponyville Civil War. <laughs> oh, yes. I can just imagine it now. Captain Applejack is doing stuff while Iron Rarity is doing stuff too. Yay. In before the special issue where the Finn Flam brothers assassinate Applejack and they spend five, five comics dwelling with the loss. Uh. <laughs> oh wow. Uh. I'm worried about that third Captain America movie. You have no idea how worried I am. It'll be cool, it'll be mm. cool. Oh, it'll, it'll be different than the comics to be sure. For stars, they don't have that idiot speedball walking around. <laughs> oh wow. But. For for this comic, the big question is, are you on Team Apple or Team Business? Ooh, that is a hard one. Well, uh, normally we t- we give our initial thoughts with inverted alphabetical order, but seeing as how I've, I've taken Master of Ceremonies role this time around, I think I should go last. So it's basically alphabetical order then? Yes, we're actually going to follow the way it was supposed to be done. <laughs> oh, the horror. Ah, <laughs> no. I don't like order. <laughs> I don't like change. <laughs> I like change. Change. Could you help a guy out? Oh, God. So that means I am first in line yep. to, to get shot. Oh, yep. God. Yes, you fire those thoughts, man. Okay. Well, uh, I think this is the most forgettable comic that I have read in this series so far. And that kind of, that doesn't make it worse than the, than the last two arcs, the ones with, uh, you know, the, 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 the Revenge of Everfree and the Good, the Bad and the Ponies. That doesn't make it, make it worse. But it's just that after finished reading it, I didn't get anything new from the characters. I didn't get anything memorable from the situation. And the whole thing is basically one misunderstanding that is taken to the last consequences, which I always thought it was very unpleasant. None of the characters really comes off as good or likable, except for Twilight Sparkle. And it sucks that she's practically missing during the first issue altogether. So, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of this comic. I I still think that the art of Agnes Garbowska is beautiful, but I think that in this one, Christina Rice completely dropped the ball when it came to the writing. Uh, I I didn't feel much for this one. Sorry, guys. I'm going to be the negative side on this review. Oh, it's cool, it's cool. When I first read this one, I didn't know what to expect. And after finished reading this, all I could think of was Marvel, Captain America, Civil War, like Civil War, Civil War. That's, that's, that's the only thing that's running through my head. And like, hmm, this is fun. But after reading the first issue, it was, okay, you're building the tension, you're building the scenario. and when it peaked to the end of the first issue, okay, real conflict ca- comes in. And alrighty then, we'll see what they do. And the ending was okay. It's nothing spectacular. In the end, this was just there. It's a two-parter that it's okay. I, I think it's almost the same as any two-parter that has, well, let's just say that it's there, you really don't remember it. Like, it's just there. Almost to the Diamond Keeper thing. 
Oh, yes, Adventure, Adventures in Manhattan. Yeah, that one. It's almost to that level, but the diamond thing was much more memorable because of puzzle solving and crime solving. Yay, that's about it. And Trixie. Yes, yes. Who can, who cannot forget Trixie? Everybody loves the trickster. That's right. You don't, you don't forget the Trixie. And as for me, I'll agree that this is a forgettable two-parter, that really there's nothing high stakes involved. There are elements from the show that are present in a comical sense. Uh, more on that when we get in depth. But basically, you, you could, you can skip this and not have missed any deep development. Some of the characters come off worse than others. I mean, far worse. Rarity in particular really takes one on the chin. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. In the second half, we get to see Twilight actually trying to lead for a change, really trying to live up to a princess organization. And there are different ways to uh, interpret that. So I'm going to try, try to give a fair viewing on that, but I always have sort of a bias because I get on my high horse whenever talking about Princess Twilight. Uh-huh. But Silver, you are half horse. Ah, uh, yeah, but I'm just a horse's ass. <laughs> it, I'm surprised that you guys are kind of like the same opinion as me. So it is not just me. It is a very forgettable comic. To me, it's to to me, it's not that I don't like it in terms of the whole story. The story is just there. It's not bad. It's not good. It's better than the bookworm arc. Remember that one? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, of uh, course, of course. I do, I do want to say, however, that there is one thing in part one that I actually thought was kind of clever. And again, we'll talk about that when I, when we get into the minutia. But one, one fun idea can't really dr- dr- carry a whole story. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You gotta flesh things out. This could have been easily solved when the mayor just says, well, we'll just wait for Princess Twilight. Let's move on. And that's about it. Oh, well, the, the mayor of all the characters who doesn't come, who don't come out of this looking well, the mayor in particular. Oh. Yeah, but poor her. Like, she's just doing her job. Like. No, she's not. No, okay. Technically, she's so not doing her job, Norman. Look, te- technically for this one, what I'm looking here is she has all the info in front of her. She's just doing her job from A to Z, or Z in your case. And what she's presented is, okay, these are the facts. And when someone questions her and she's trying to look for the answer, it's like, uh, let's see. I got no idea. Princess Twilight didn't put any other info in here. So it's technically Twilight's fault. And the only person who could have easily solved this problem was Twilight. But I do agree with you guys, since she's the mayor, she should know all these things. That and also bowl, bowling day took took precedent. Uh yeah. <laughs> see, see, that's that's where she's not kind of good. So now now we really are getting into the the nuts and bolts of this story. But before you start, but, but before you start, I need to tell the audience at home who are listening to this. After you guys voted for what episode we're going to do, either the comic review or the movie review, this is not it. This is just a filler for us to tally the votes. Because we're recording this before we got the results. So this is kind of a pin into the, whatchamacallit, um, reviews for next week. It's been in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, like this, this is being recorded on the 20th of September. We are not receiving the votes just yet. We are mm-hmm. telling them. Yeah. So yeah. it will come later. Don't worry about it. We are not ignoring you. We love you. You, you guys have no idea how much we appreciate that you are there. Because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be able to do this. Like, if you have nobody to listen or nobody to watch, you, you suddenly stop producing and you guys are watching. And that's awesome of you. True that, true that. Anyway, thank you. And, well, this will just be in between what you want. So just consider this uh, Ponyville Civil War. <laughs> anyway, Silver, take us away. Well, and always remember, the, the voting system we've got going right now is still going to be better than the 2016 elections here in America. <laughs> Uh, oh, yes. oh, I don't even want to think about that. I, I wish I didn't have to, but I got to live with the consequences. Oh, wow. Good As man. do you all. Oh, God. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yes, let's jump into uh, at Ponyville Days. And as uh, James mentioned, written by Christina Rice, art by Agnes Garboska, and color assistance by Laura Perry, Lauren Perry. Hmm, that's new. 
So, we start off at the train station, which means Twilight is about to board the Exposition Express. Yay. <laughs> the exposition won't be done on the Express. <laughs> now they got to get it at the terminal so they can put an end to it. <laughs> Basically, she's off on a way to do princessy things in Canterlot, which is really plot speak for we got to get her out of the scene. We can't have her around. So, ooh, important princess ju- duty. Yeah, I've seen Princess Spike. I know what, how important that stuff is. And so all of her friends are trying to pester her, especially the Pinkie Pie, on what the theme for the celebration of Ponyville's founding will be. But Twilight's all hush hush. And I'm not sure if there's anything in this opening that you, that anyone really wants to remark upon. No, it's nothing really. It's just like, okay, bye bye guys. I need to go to Cantalot to do princess stuff. Oh, by the way, the theme for this year is a surprise. You'll know until Mare Mare blurs it out in the podium. Okay, bye bye. Yeah, it's just going through each one of the main six until the time to go to the train station is ready. And that's it. It's like, oh, great. We have the typical introduction that we need to have for every comic and every episode because we cannot, we cannot Trust the reader or the viewer with having enough memory that they'll remember who each one of these characters is. Well, maybe they well, know pe- people will want to forget this comic afterwards. Oh, wow. Oh, I went there. Oh, snap. Rarity will want to forget her tail getting stepped on in the next panel. Oh, wow, yeah. Oof. Yeah, that's a, that was a curious piece. And then you can play a game of Spot the Cutie Marks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, this is going to be fun. I see Time Turner, I see a coffee mug, I see shoes. I see Secret Agent Bon Bon. Why would your cutie mark be a foot accessory when you don't have feet? It's best not to question. Oh no, I'm going to break your minds. <laughs> Maybe the guy's just doing a lot of soul searching. Uh, <laughs> oh, you, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, uh, who knows? <laughs> they are trying to figure out their character. <laughs> they know that Hasbro is not giving them any. Oh, uh. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, All right, and then we get probably the most meta humor in the uh, in the entire comic is the mayor gets up and talks about uh, Ponyville days, the celebrating of the town, and she starts with those three immortal words that will piss off any critic. As, As you, you know, know. <laughs> my advice to you, dear listeners, whenever you hear the phrase "As you know." Or some variant thereof. Turn off the story. This is just them espousing exposition for the audience. Now, thankfully, Applejack and Apple Bloom are smart enough to say, we already know this. Get on with it. Get on with it. Yeah, get on with it. And they do get on with it. And then... And this theme, as determined by Princess Twilight Sparkle, is moving forward, looking back together. Which, you know what, Twilight, I'm sorry, I have to dock you points for slogans. That just seems too wordy. And part of Ponyville Days is that you get, they're going to give a commemorative plaque to the, to the first structure in Ponyville. And the youngest of the family, who of course is female because it's, the ratio here is like nine to one, which I'm <laughs> pretty sure the stallions of Ponyville find awesome. Yeah. And then uh, you realize that getting stuck with nine wives is not all that good of a deal. Just go ask, go ask those Mormons. <laughs> oh wow, we we, go, we went there, right? Mm, well, you went, th- we went oh, there. Yeah, oh. I, um, <sighs> I did. <laughs> Trust me, good Mormons. You survived uh, those South Park dudes and their play. We're we're pretty tame by comparison. <laughs> and I had the pleasure of seeing the Book of Mormon, which is actually very fair. I really want to watch that play. It'll be something else. But things are about to play off here. Because it turns out that while Apple Bloom is going up to to uh, become Ponyville Princess, guess who gets in the way? Uh, 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 no, no, they're not the best villain in the entire show. At least the one that has yet to be defeated. Like, Gideon from Gravity Falls has nothing on Diamond Tiara. <laughs> She's evil. Yes, and this came out j- the same month as the Diamond Tiara Silver Spoon Friends Forever. This was the month of Diamond Tiara, and this is where the comic starts to get the real conflict going, because ac- according to Diamond Tiara and even Filthy Rich, the Apple family may have been the fr- first structure on the land. 
Ponyville didn't start until Filthy's grandfather, Stinking Rich, started his business. That was the first Ponyville structure. Oof, wow. Here's a debate we can do. Like, we can really split our group up together here. Like, which one do you go for? The farm or the business? Because if you think about it, yeah, the farm was here first. So that's why Stinking was there. But without Stinking, the business wouldn't, well, the people wouldn't have migrated there. So, wow. Very thought-provoking. James, what's your take? Does Ponyville life begin, uh, begin at a uh, foundation or businessception? That's kind of like the whole issue about what was first, the chicken or the egg. But in the, in this case, I think it all starts with the one that puts the seed. So I will say it was the Apple family ones that started it. That Because, I mean, if, they, if there is no sap apple jam, there is no surplus, no uh, goods to sell. So the rich family might as well be selling cans of air. They will be selling empty jars. But because the Apple family was there, they will be, they were able to sell this kind of stuff. Thus starting the economy of Ponyville and how it all got funded. I think it's the Apple family, the ones that, uh, that deserve, uh, to be hosting it. Because it's already started. If you go to the inception of, uh, of the town, it should be the Apple family farm. Mm, true that. But you'll, then you'll have the debate of, oh, without the, um, rich family, they won't even be a town. So, this is an interesting debate because it's either or, like egg or chicken. So I think us arguing about this won't end up anywhere besides going through a round of circles where in the end, the problem is solved with a real simple act of, you want a plaque? Okay, both of you get a plaque. Done. Oh, God, spoilers. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's just simple. No, <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah, it, that, but Norman is right. You could have this call, this whole conflict fixed in one issue. In fact, I thought this was going to be a one issue kind of deal. When I saw it was two, when I thought it, when I saw it was two issues, I was like, what a waste of time and resources. Why do you have to spend two issues talking about something that could be solved in one? Because this show and these characters, they are, they are way smarter than we give them credit for. And they can fix a problem really quickly. Okay, sometimes it can get a bit unrealistic, but you tend to appreciate people that are smart and people that are intelligent. And these characters are not very intelligent. They are just being pig-headed, stubborn, I want to be the one on the spotlight kind of thing. But when we talk about children, it's fine, because look at Apple Bloom and Diamond Tiara. Yeah, okay, they're kids. All right, they can argue. But what Filthy Rich and Applejack are doing, and then by default what Applejack and Rarity end up doing... Applejack and Rarity have been super friends since, like, episode 8 of season 1, and they know each other very well, and they have supported each other very well. They, this thing that they are doing, God, I hate, I hate to say this, it's very out of character. Well, I don't think so, because in terms of what Filthy is proposing is that the plaque where it will be plastered at, or the plaque... The location of the plaque will be at Carissa Boutique, since that's the first landmark where um, Stinking Rich built his first business is at. So with that, the mindset of Rarity, let's, let's see, um, really, really? With the plaque there, ponies would never miss a trip to see such a historical location. It it would become a tourist destination. So with that, Carissa Boutique would have been wrecking in business just for people to see the plaque and people would have gone to a shop, so more business. So without giving two plaques away and having one plaque, business would have been booming for one of them. And Applejack and Rarity are business ponies. Uh, yeah, but I don't think they are being all the, the, the smartest one here. And also, Major Mary has been really stupid as well. Because he's like, oh, I don't know, Princess Twilight is the one that knows about this. I can fix this by myself. It's not like I have all the records here and I have a fully functioning brain, like I proved in the Friends Forever issue with Applejack. Well, if you see I... what they are meant to do is monster attack and haywire magic. All this is under Princess Twilight's regime. Hmm. Uh, but for my two cents, one, where is Apple Bloom's bow in that panel where they're glaring at each other? Magical teleporting bow. I, I'm sorry, zero ten ruined forever. <laughs> Unsubscribe. But to me, this is less a question of the business or historical foundation, and it's saying it's a statement. 
if they take if they say that Ponyville didn't start until after the Apple family, they're basically saying you're not a part of this community. We've allowed you to join, but you're not really one of us. Given all the support the town has shown for Applejack, I find that very, very unbelievable. And while I think Filthy is actually being somewhat reasonable in wanting this commemoration, he's usually pretty cool with the Apple family. It makes me wonder why he is, how he can be on such good terms with them while, while Diamond Tiara and Apple Bloom are mortal enemies. Also, it seems that Diamond Tiara was possessed by the devil at one point as her eyes changed color. <laughs> oh my. It's, she's Damien. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. It's, but, it, but, do you remember that, uh, Family Appreciation Day episode where Filthy Rich actually, uh, punishes Diamond Tiara by dressing her as a, putting her some bunny ears and making her sing to the water with Granny Smith? Yeah, yeah. Because, she insulted Granny Smith, calling her a cookie old lady. She's like, oh, you, you, you. The Filthy Rich was like, oh, you put, uh, our business in peril by insulting one of our major, uh, providers. I'm gonna punish you. You, you spoiled little brat. <laughs> so it is, it is clear in that, it was clear in that episode that Filthy puts business above family. Because if he, if he put family above business, he will just let Damon Tierra get away with anything. However, we have seen him punish her in the past and seal deal with the, with deals with the Apple family in the past. But this is petty. This is petty of such a businessman. Yeah, but if we want to talk petty, here's where things start to really derail. Now, now Norman, as you say, Rarity would, would benefit the business of having the plaque in front of her store. But before she signed on to assist Filthy Rich, she said, we're with you 100% Applejack. <laughs> and that's the line that undoes her. Because while I could almost, I could actually accept if she were willing to consider the business aspect, she is a business pony. Having her do this after pledging 100% support shows her to be pretty much a traitor. Pretty much she's selling her friend out for, for business now. Now that you mentioned that, yes, Rarity here is, uh, <laughs> Well, let's just say the words I, the words that were mentioned were not pleasant. A traitor potato. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, I wouldn't call her so much a traitor, but they are taking that, because Rarity has that ba- vanity about herself, the whole, I am the prettiest, I am the best, I am the most talented, and hey, she's right on every one of those aspects. I mean, come on, well. best pony. Uh, but, <laughs> no, 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 I, I, I'm, uh, having a point here is that they are taking one of the aspects of her personality and they are exploiting it. They are exaggerating it for the sake of moving the story forward. And that's something that this show does a lot. I mean, that was simple ways in spades in that they take her uh, fanboyism or fangirlism to uh, the extreme of changing her character completely. Yeah, the, the, the show has done it. The comic has done it. I think it has done it well enough that you don't really notice it, but in this one, it's kind of like stra- staring at your face, like, oh god. I what would are have you guys agreed doing? with you if season, if we're still in season one, but this is season four material here. Season four, right? Or is it season five? Well, season four. Yeah, okay. This was uh, really wait well, a minute. This, uh, this, this Actually, comic think... came out before season five started. I think it came out at the same time, didn't, didn't it? I'm not uh-huh. sure, but <coughs> either or maybe this this is maybe. way way after season one. So Rarity's characteristic here is really not like Rarity. For her to just say, um, "Sorry, Applejack, I want more money. I should go with this plan that Filthy Rich is doing." So sorry, but I want that plaque now. And much of the town is split fifty fifty. You've got uh, actually some pretty reasonable arguments that. Uh, you know, without without Granny Smith and the, and the Zap Apples, there'd be no reason to even come to this patch of land, which was the Ever Free Forest at the time. Uh, but without stink, without Stinking Rich and his family, a lot of these ponies wouldn't be here. So we end with we have a shot of the town split clear down the middle. And sorry, cheerily Big Macintosh shippers, but she's on the business side of things. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> And I'm gonna get some angry well, I'm letters sure for that. I'm sure she is there because 
if she's if, if she's not on that side, then Filthy will not keep giving money to the school. So she's there for a reason. Like, my students above everything. I'm sorry, Big Mac. We cannot be together. <laughs> I have to give myself to my students. Whoa. Um, it's <laughs> I know, it sounds weird. But no, you know, this is kind of something that I that, something that I kind of enjoy because we have this idyllic place that is Ponyville, that is like, oh, it's perfect, it's sunny and happy, and rainbows are all, all over the place. I mean, look at that, this rainbow dash going there. And then you never expected them to have this kind of like, ah, oh, angry conflict, I'm going to start racing, that we're going we're gonna to have two sides fighting each other for, for whatever conflict it is. But then they are having this, and that's good. Usually when you have a community, there's going to be one side or the other. Um, I like that. I don't like the way it's done here, though. I mean, kudos for doing... I'm, I'm clapping. You may not hear it, but I'm applauding now. Kudos for doing something like this, but you could have done it so much better, guys. Well, if from my perspective, this actually reflects a fandom, or <laughs> indeed any collection, very strongly. You gather people together under a unifying theme. Maybe it's political, religious, entertainment. Every sports team gathers. <laughs> and from from the far-off perspective, it looks beautiful. It's just this one singular community. But then you get in, you get closer, you get in the middle of it, you see events like this. People start asking questions about the minutia. And suddenly, the diversity of opinion starts to form. And sub-communities form, and there are opposing sides and arguments. And it's very hard, because not only are people disagreeing, as Applejack, Rarity, and Rainbow show, uh, you say some harsh words, and that tends to drive people into into one group or the other. It, it is true that also when it comes to these kind of situations, you can get yourself sw- swept away by the, uh, the the group mentality, like what the majority thinks. And kind of like the indivi- the individual gets lost in the in the maelstrom of opinions, but I, it's kind of weird. This show has very strong individuals. It's kind of weird to suddenly see them reduced to just uh, figure A, figure B, or one one tagline, which is kind of like what what was what was my main con- my main concern is that this is suddenly all about the group. It's less about the the individual. And speaking of individuals, we haven't even addressed Pinky and Fluttershy. Oh, you're right. Rainbow's on board with Rarity, less because she supports the idea, but more that, even though, you know, she should be a cider fanatic, more that Applejack insulted her. Now, Pinky sells her side for Zap Apple Pies. <laughs> uh, the lady got priority. The lady got priority. And Fluttershy represents that very small section of any community that would rather just stay out of that, out of the drama, which means sitting on the sidelines or hiding. You know, usually, usually when, when it comes to fandom drama, if we are going to follow with the, to continue with the fandom analogy, when it comes to fandom drama and things like that, I am Fluttershy because I stay away from everything. I just don't participate on that and I just continue my own because I know it's not worth it. But this is something that is actually worth it. This is a big conflict. This is something that is it's your town? It's the place that you live. You should be involved. Why aren't you taking part on this, Fluttershy? Just take a side. Think about what your beliefs are, what you support, and take a side. Don't just be quiet. This is the problem. Why? This is when there is an election and the, the one party loses. The ones that support our party, they are like, "Oh, what did we lose? Oh, well, you lose because you didn't go to vote." Well, the problem with that analogy is, James, that Fluttershy here is a pacifist. And having two of her best friends fight over a silly little plaque seems unreasonable. Uh, 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 for pac- pacifists. Screw pacifists. Screw pacifism. Hippies suck ass in every universe. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, but hippies at least chose a side and were vocal. They were just really high while doing it. <laughs> what is three hugger when you need her? <laughs> uh, she's like getting in tune with the universe and clearing her chakras. <laughs> Righteous. Uh, I'm the only person in the whole planet who likes Tree Hugger. I swear to God. Hey, some people uh, like them too. Oh yeah, lots of people like Tree Hugger. Uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, back to the comic. 
the apples decide oh, nuts to this. We're gonna we're gonna go have our own uh, founding of Ponyville Convention, and it's gonna have that's not a word and alcohol. And you know what? Forget the forget the convention. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! So they start gathering pies, or rather, making pies to fling at the opposing party, which I guess is still better than mud. <laughs> oh, 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 wow. But you do know that what Granny Smith is doing here is just homemade bombs, right? Rather than a homemade bond, it's a homemade pie barrage. Yeah. With, I can only assume, is a homemade trebuchet. Oh, you, wow. Can, can you, like, mail order those things? Because I want one. I don't know. I don't dare. My God. A trebuchet I, that shoots pie, apple pie. I think public transit would be way better if we replaced buses with trebuchets, you just say, here's what, here's where I want to go. Okay. Calculating launch and, uh, you know, you pay your money and you take your chances. I wouldn't want to get a trebuchet to the face. I, I'm not sure. Well, you'd be on the trebuchet. It would be your face to someone else's face. But <laughs> at anywho, Apple Bloom decides to try and settle this. She doesn't care about being a princess. This is more bad blood than is necessary. So out of the mouths of babes comes truth. She's even close to getting Applejack to simmer down. Because it's kind of strange. Even though that's Granny Smith on the podium, it's Applejack doing the rabble rousing. Even though it's Filthy Rich who's on the plat, on the posters, it's Rarity who fires the next shot. And this is where it gets weird. So Rarity and Rainbow decide to launch clothing. Which is just weird. Alright, the pie thing, I've witnessed buffaloes and settler ponies having a war where they throw pies rather than bullets. I will say, I wish history had been like this. It would have been way more fun. World War II would take on a lot different meaning if it had been a pie contest. <laughs> you know, have you um have you ever heard of this uh, these, uh, cross- weird crossover uh, podcast series uh, titled Doctor Who's Adventures? I've heard of the radio drama. The, yes, the radio drama. The one where Twilight Sparkle is the, the assistant of Doctor Who's. I may have missed more recent ones, but yeah. The, there was an episode where they go to World Party 2, and it's like World War 2, except it's a massive party where people, th- where ponies throw pies at each other, and they just have, uh, tag urit contests and all that, and it's, and I'm like, yeah, you're right. World War 2 would have been a lot more fun if it was just a constant party. Such is the thing in dreams, but, well, the pies make sense, forcibly dressing ponies in Ugly clothing. One, the physical dynamics baffle me. Two, <laughs> this basically requires that every unicorn in Ponyville be supporting F- Filthy Rich, which they say unicorns are prone to greed in this show. Or they're or, like Griffons then. Or materialism. But I just think that's coincidental at least. And we get to what probably makes or breaks this entire comic. As Twilight returns and Apple Bloom comes to her saying, please help, this has gone out of control. And Twilight makes it clear from the dialogue she thought Apple Bloom would be the Ponyville princess. We get this two-page spread of everyone duking it out with clothing, pies, posters, and crayons. And this is what killed the comic for so many people. I know that uh, Commander Firebrand said to me he couldn't read the next part. This was just too silly. I just wish to continue. This is quite silly. Right, get on with it. Get on with it. It is kind of a waste of time, yeah, because it's, it's w- w- like, you are like, okay, where is this going? What is the purpose of all of this? Just, just, just to have a recreation of that, uh, fight at the end of, uh, over a barrel, but in Ponyville. It's like, what, why? I can actually understand where Commander Fireburn is coming from. I will stop reading it had I not cared for the character of Twilight. When I just look at the scene here, it's just, what? It's funny, true, but it's, mm, all of me, him. That's, that's about it, all of me, him. It, yeah, it's... you're like, what? What? Yeah. And, and what? it takes Twilight to stop the whole war thing, and in the end, what does it solve? Well, not Nothing! Much... <laughs> Because Twilight can't magical banjax this problem, <laughs> which I actually, which I actually appreciate. This isn't Twilight comes in, gives everyone a lecture, and they all say, "Oh, that's right. We should just agree with the princess of friendship, because the princess is always right." <laughs> <laughs> but ain't it true? 
<laughs> so Twilight gives everyone a stern talking to, but all of the main, well, the rest of the main six are just so hurt over how this has played out. They've said things that made this beyond a, a mental debate. Now it's really is personal. And so everyone just sort of leaves to cool off. Maybe they'll skip the Ponyville days this year. Except that Princess Celestia manages to make things worse. How did she do that? She basically invited ponies from all over Ponyville to witness their friendship and gave Twilight only less than a day's notice because, and this is impressive, you can see the swarms gathering. Wow. Honestly speaking, in terms of Celestia's planning, what could go wrong? Twilight is a princess of friendship, and Ponyville, from what she told us, was pretty awesome. I bet everybody in Equestria would love to see this. And logically speaking, yeah, if things had went well and nothing had gone wrong, Twilight would have no problem at all. But <laughs> Yeah, but Norman, the way that they are framing that, sh like the last panel of the comic where you see, like Silver put it, the uh, hordes of ponies so, uh, going to Ponyville and all that, it's, am I the only one having the Isengard theme from Lord of the Rings as they are looking at the orcs going all over the Middle Earth? Like, y y I'm looking at that and I am just hearing, dun 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 <laughs> Because it's like, that's more dreading and, and terrifying than it is like, oh, look at that, happy ponies and all that. And like, yeah, yeah, whatever, screw that. We're going to have an invasion here. It's it's really? bad. It's a bad situation that Twilight is on. Really? All, I'm, all I hear is send in the clowns. <laughs> send no, but... in those soulful and doleful schmaltz by the boatful clowns. But you are absolutely right. Princess Celestia manages to once again make things difficult. She manages to ruin everything again. Ah, uh, why do we have her in? Why do we have her in in power anyway? Because everybody loves her. Well, uh, actually, according to uh, Canterlot Boutique, Twilight is the reigning princess. Oh, I guess Celestia got voted off the island. <laughs> I guess that after several seasons of just sitting there by the sidelines or whenever trying to attack back or defend her subjects, she just got her ass kicked. Ay, I guess that, yeah, she got kicked. I'm sorry, Celestia, you are useless. Either way, speaking of, well, uses, we begin part two. Unless anyone has final comments on part one. Oh, no. That, my, my only comment is that, f thank God, it's over. Oh, God, part two is coming. Why? Well, Why? Part two is going to be interesting. Yeah. Now, okay, so coming out of part one, Flood, uh, Twilight really has only four ponies, well, three ponies and a dragon on her side. Spike, Fluttershy, who's managed to stay out of this mess, the mayor, who really has a vested interest in Ponyville uniting, reuniting, and Apple Bloom, who's able to see beyond hurt feelings or rivalries to just want Ponyville united once again. So I thought, okay, going into part two, I thought, hey, should, we'll get to see how these four can affect change in the town. Nope. Nope. This is Twilight's story now. Fluttershy is just an idea pony. Spike is just an assistant. We'll get to the mayor. And Apple Bloom, who strives so hard to try and avert this disaster, is now relegated to an even lesser role. They suddenly turn this, this that could have been a, uh, uh, a more conflict ridden, a bit more, uh, well, for this, uh, IP, quote unquote, violent, uh, take on a slice of life where the main six, or at least the, the, the most, uh, uh, prominent of the main six, they take this, they take a seat back and they just focus on the side characters or on, on the small characters. And they don't do that in order to give more spotlight to Twilight. But I, I really have no problem with that, because I don't know what you guys will think, but don't you think that Twilight is the only character of the entire uh, two-parter that doesn't come off as uh, a horrible, hateable, or unlikable? In this comic? Yeah, this comic? at least in these two comics. I think she could she could stand to take better notes for everyone else. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll talk about her leadership later on. But yeah, she is the... Uh, she is way more likable than her friends in this comic. 
And except maybe Fluttershy, who points out that all the ponies are still devoted to her, even if they're split on other sides. Biased! Biased! You say that because Fluttershy is your favorite pony and no, for, for no other reason. Biased! It's there in the book. Come on. No, but I do agree <laughs> here that Twilight here, honestly speaking, like, I wouldn't have mine if Twilight was not here at all. Like, here's, here's my mindset. Oh, here's what I want to see in the comic. It's like, everything happens in part one happens except for the ending where Twilight didn't came back home. Apple Bloom was the star. She was the one who solved the problem and get everybody united. And Twilight comes back and problem is solved. She says, Oh, how did the Pony Day Festival went? And everybody said, Oh, it went fine. While the audience know it didn't. So funny ending there. So that's what I thought it would have happened. But nope, we got something else. Oh, well. Uh, For those who are fans of Princess Twilight, they are going to be very happy with this comic. Or are they? There's that question is yet to be answered mm-hmm. because because mm-hmm. Twilight Twilight makes the round and basically gets everyone to agree, uh, to do the work, not necessarily to work together, mm. but that they'll still do it. Yeah, yeah. And we get to see a lot of panels of the of the Ponyville citizens just putting their spiel. The cranky and Matilda pre wedding, <laughs> filthy rich, the bowling ponies. Although I know Don, Donnie's not there. <laughs> he cool. died. He died. He died. Uh, he died. I, he died. I know. I saw, I saw the, I saw the can. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw the can. <laughs> and she, she, she even talks to Gummy. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that Gummy has the solution for all the problems and the secrets of the universe and life. The problem is that he doesn't speak. That is the only problem. One thing I need to bring up, the CMCs are cute. Well, that's because they got big eyes. Yeah, just look at them. Look at them. Yeah, also, Agnes Karbowska is really good at drawing fillies. That is one thing that she does really well. Like the, the Manhattan Mystery Arc and the Friends Forever with Babs and, and Rarity. That was an adorable, those were adorable comics. So Ponyville anti-aggression uh, pact takes effect. Twilight gets everyone ready, and basically, you know, because this is Ponyville, I kind I think they respect Twilight more as an individual than her title. She's done a lot to organize the community, to lead them when they when things are were tough. Mm-hmm. Th- this is more than respecting Twilight the individual, and not just error. The princess is always right, which again, that line just really ticks me off. But then, when when things hit the fan, when more ponies come. Than could everyone could imagine when they're riding on top of the train, which is safety hazard, it all starts to fall apart. Pinky is giving the most bizarre history lessons. Pony's got nowhere to go. There's more dust cloud than anywhere. It's all falling apart, and ponies are coming to Twilight saying, "This is disaster. What are we going to do?" And our grand leader Twilight, who has been chosen to lead an entire nation at some point, goes, "I don't know." It basically plays up the pity party that you, I can't do this alone. I need you all to work together. Stop being morons. Here's the lesson that I don't know how, but to me it's on this panel here. After Twilight says, I don't know, and just say, I'm only one pony and I can, I can solve all of this problem on my own, which means that work together, people, because we are a town. We're supposed to work together. And the moral of the story here is, Work together, even with the differences that you have. Guys, teamwork. You have done this in the past. You can do this. You... Uh, yeah. Really? Community? What is this? There is... Okay, that you need to put some sense of, you know, not everything <laughs> is peachy and perfect because life without conflict is very boring. But when the conflict is just uncalled for... Mm, they might as well introduce two completely new characters and have them fight each other and have the town side with them. Mm-hmm. Or, who knows? Or, or hell, bring back the Flim Flam brothers and have one side side with Flim and the other side side with Flam. Oh wow, that would be interesting. That would have been something. That would have been. That would have been. So- oh, we we really could have had Pony Stark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Steve and Steve Nickard. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Oh. But basically, it is it is good. However, when Twilight just says, "Please help me," because that's that's a humble, 
that's a humble way to approach this. Now, I, I do think Twilight needs to learn you can't just force a, pro- a project forward. You have to settle the disputes as, as much as possible. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if she'll exercise that moving forward is the only thing. Basically, her plan was flawless in terms of if everybody pony does their job that they're specialized in, things would have go smoothly because, well, you have the cake doing what they do best. You have Fluttershy doing what she does best, taking care of animals. You, you have, basically, you have everyone doing what they're meant to do. But in the rush that they have where the town could only supply this much and the people who are coming in was too much for them to handle, this was something or this was a situation where they need to work together. Okay. Uh, they have worked <laughs> together in the past, though. They they did uh, prepare everything for Princess Celestia before the Paris Sprites ruined everything. So they do know how to work in team. Uh, they know how to do teamwork. Well, this was before the Civil War. Yeah. Plus, they they didn't know how to get it all in. Hi, hi, hi! Oh, God. okay. No, we're not talking about that. That's for the After Dark show. No, we don't um, have an After Dark show. No, moving on. Oh, I, not I yet. Just, I just had just now. Uh, I keep scrolling through this comic, trying to find the part. Oh yes, at the very end, right before Twilight pleads with everyone to help her, you know, not let leave it all behind and work together. The mayor, the mayor, is upset she's going to miss her turn at the bowling tournament. If ever there were a line to make you lose faith in a character, you this whole thing happened because you couldn't do your job. And you're worried about your bowling tournament. This is so not the mayor from the the Friends Forever. Yeah, yeah, she's not. Yeah. Hell, I will go as far as saying that this is not the mayor from the actual TV show because what little we have seen the mayor doing proper, she has done a few things that is, that are okay. She at least tried to keep the town in 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 a state of calm every now and then. But yeah, that is a petty complaint. Petty, but very much noticeable. Especially when later the the mayor is doing the master ceremonies, thanking everyone for helping. Yeah, we did better than you! <laughs> and so Twilight gives a plaque to Sweet Apple Acres uh, as the first residential building and to Rarity in honor of Filthy Rich and Stinking Rich and all the other riches uh, for the first co- commercial building. And even Spike says, well, that's a simple solution. <laughs> and and the audience doth daw. <laughs> oh wow! I was so angry at that point. It was like, yeah, you could have fixed this like thirty pages ago. They there is no need for there was no need for all of this. Oh, look at that no. hug, you know, so cute. And I screw this. What is my? I don't want this. What is the the lead button? Off of my bias. You know what? You could have solved this in issue, the first issue. <laughs> I... Yeah, that's the thing. That's, uh, I do agree this could have been a one issue comic. Mm-hmm. And oh, okay. Celestia is there smiling because it did such a great job and she congratulates Twilight on making this so well done. Yeah. <laughs> because as usual, Twilight can, Twilight can do no wrong by Celestia, except in a Cantalot wedding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, guys, final thoughts? Oh, alphabetical order, normal? Yeah. Like always? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the comic that made me stop buying the comics in paperback format. Ooh. Wow. This, uh, I will explain to you why. It's a... Talking about money and all that. It's an economic issue. When I buy a comic... On, I buy all my comics in Comixology. Because I like to support the official release. Every single one, I don't pirate any of them. I like to support these guys. So I buy them at first value. Uh, at, 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 like I see them available, buy them. But also because it's like three euros per comic. That's not a lot of money. I can afford that. But if I want to buy them on paper, on paperback, that is ten euros, including shipping and handling. That is a lot of money at the end of the month. And I cannot afford doing that. So this is the first comic that made me realize it's not worth it to buy that much, to buy a comic for that much money. Because I was like, yeah, up until then, I was happy with the storylines, I was happy with the artwork, I was okay with it. 
Uh, not after this one. I'm sorry. I'm going to keep buying it digital, but I think this was a very disappointing. It was wow. very, 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 very boring. And it danced around many issues and it didn't really solve anything. The characters are out of character and in the end I thought it was, it wasn't worth my time or my investment on it. So, sorry, Agnes Garbowska. Sorry, Christine Rice, but that's what it is. Sometimes you, you cannot win everything. I will stick with your other comics though. As for me, how do I put this? This comic here was just another issue to fill in before we get the really awesome one. Well, at least there are four more issues away, but this was just padding in the whole mainline comic. There's nothing special about it. You didn't get anything out of it and you didn't miss anything. It's just there to be there for that month. But overall, the art was okay. The story was iffy at best. And they did introduce some kind of civil war that people who are interested in it... uh, could have been, yeah, I don't know. It's just, how do you put this? It's the issue that it brought up between which was first, the farm or the business side. That was interesting, but in the end, it couldn't have been solved one way or the other without hurting someone's feeling. And the resolution we got was the most logical choice, but it shouldn't have been us in the first place. So this was just, there to be there. And from my perspective, the first part of this offered some interesting, uh, almost a sort of satire of communities. You know, groups gathering together under a shared interest or mentality, but becoming divided on the smaller issues. You will see this happen throughout life in various different forms. It is, it is part and parcel of when any more than two people get together in a group. Which, and sometimes if it's a marriage, all you need is two people to start that argument. Oh, so true. But then the weird thing is that the second half almost feels like an entirely different storyline. Characters that had a stake before have no role. Characters that were part of the process are relegated to the sideline. Twilight is gone for the first half and then the focus of the second half. And it doesn't really draw you in. You've either, half the audience is lost because of the silliness of the first act. The other half gets lost because suddenly the characters they've been following aren't really participants or have a reduced role. You know what they should have done with this comic? I just figured it out. They should have had Twilight Gone for both issues. That's what I said from the very beginning. Yes, they should have. Ha- yes, yes, absolutely. I agree with you, Norman. They should have have her gone for both issues, and then at the end she will arrive and be like, uh, "This, uh, like, here, solution. Deus ex machina." <laughs> it will be the one time where I will be like, "Yes, a Deus ex machina. Good, fix it." <laughs> and there you go. Conflict over. Great. It's better than shifting the focus. Mm, no, but I do like the shifting of focus aspect because it's something new in terms of storytelling. Well, nothing new in the general scheme of things, but for ponies, for this kind of storytelling, it's interesting where, okay, we will start off the conflict where the ponies fight each other, and then we have two warring ponies between Applejack and Rarity, fight, fight, fight. After that, they all disperse. They don't want to talk to each other. They're butthurt. And we'll have Twilight here being the main star of the whole story. This reminds me of Devil May Cry, where in Devil May Cry 4, where you were following Nero, and then in the middle, you went to Dante. What, like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, it reminded me of oh, that. So, like in, like in Metal Gear Solid 2, how you start with Solid Snake, but then you spend the rest of the game with Raiden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it, people have done that better, but this one was just, uh, not done well. Yeah, there are video games that do that. There are there are movies that do that, but pfft. you started with that one character. You didn't give enough spo- of the spotlight to the character that you are going to be stuck with for the rest mm. of the story. Yeah, it really has no purpose. Oh, that one movie. You you remember the movie where um it's told from different point of views, and then we ended up with one of the main characters. Like I I forgot. It's about someone assassin trying to assassinate the president, something like that. 
Oh, Vantage you're point, talking about Vantage Point. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. The one with Dennis Quaid. You have the same story being told by five different, through angles. five different points of view. Yeah. yeah, five different angles. There was something interesting too. Yeah, that's well done. Uh, but in the end, we got this. <laughs> yeah, we got this. And this was passable. Yeah. But, uh, but that's passable as in, it's not so bad that I am, ang- that I am angered or just, really objecting to the message it presents, like the good, the bad, and the ponies, or the revenge of Ever- Everfree, mm-hmm. or, sorry, root of the problem. But it's also passable oh. in that you can skip it and nothing would change. Mm, yeah. True that. You know what? Okay, I need to ask you guys. In terms of passable comics, we got the book one mark, the diamond heisting, and this one. Uh, I wouldn't say that the diamond heisting was passable. Really? Yeah, I think that it's a much more interesting comic because it has two redeem characters that are not playing the redeem the redeem part. Uh, that, that they are just doing the best to move the story forward okay, instead okay. of like, oh, please forgive me, please not don't don't think bad of me. I don't think that is a possible one. All right, but no, so please continue. The bookworm and this one. Which one do you think was the most or the more forgettable one? This one. Really? Oh God, this one. This one. Yeah. I'm sorry. To me, I would just say the bookworm one because the bookworm one has a lot of good things going for it in terms of creativity, story, and scenery, but I didn't remember it at all. Like, to me, the this one that we're reviewing right now was more memorable because I can make the joke of Civil War. Oh. See, that's great because <laughs> uh, the bookworm mark came to mind during Rarity Investigates mm. with her love of noir. Mm. Yeah, that's the other thing. I was thinking on that comic as well when I was watching that episode. Not me. Um, <laughs> um, which, by the way, I thought that the episode did it better than the comic, but mm. it was more memorable than this one. Because I, I honestly, I didn't remember this comic up until the point that you said, Norman, James, we have to review this comic. I'm like, what comic? <laughs> the Days of Ponyville one. There was a comic about the Days of Ponyville. Yeah, the, the, the Civil War comic. Oh yeah, the Civil War comic. Okay. Oh god, I completely forgot about that comic. <laughs> Well, well, to me, I, I don't know. I, mean, I just remembered this one because of how, I don't know. I mean, to me, I just thought about, well, Civil War. That's about it. Like Marvel Civil War. Avengers Civil War, was it? I don't remember. But yeah. Marvel Civil War. Mm, whatever it is. Still, I remember it because of that. But anyway, Silver, what are we going to do for next week, man? Well, I believe next week is going to be the results of the poll, correct? Yes, indeedy. I hope so. so. So, really, I can't say because it's up to you, the listeners. That is between more comics or rain, oh, not rainbow rocks, but, um, equestrian games. So, yeah, great. It, the friendship games. Yeah, friendship games. Yeah, Oof, my bad. So, either these two are going to do. So, it's up to you, boys and girls at home who are going to vote on this. So, yeah, <laughs> have fun. <laughs> and we'll see you next week with your decision. Yep, yep. But anyway. Take us out, Silver. And, oh, well, if I, if you absolutely want me to. Ah, Chris, your sound box. <laughs> I, will, I will take both the sound box and the both of you out. <laughs> I just oh, oh, it. oh, my leg. You shot me in the leg. <laughs> ah, it's bleeding everywhere. Oh, God, I need, I need a tourniquet. Help. Help. Ah. Never mind. We'll, we'll, we'll just put him in the car. we we'll just put him in the car. In, in the car, just like Marco. Mm hmm. So, all right. Well, guys, th- thank you all for listening. For the MBS show, I am Silver Quill. I am Norman Sanzo. And I'm bleeding. Help me. Ah, You'll be okay. You'll be okay. Back to the hospital. You'll be okay. You'll be okay. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye bye, y'all. Adios. Dying. Shall hemorrhage. Oh. Ending team will cover this all up. Ending team will cover this all up. <laughs>